Welcome to Peg and Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Lady Alba and Lord Knight. So spiritual names. Spiritual names, man. So <laughs> I guess, do, do you want to start by talking about our version of this and the traditional, or do we want to talk about the more new school? Well, let's talk about our first and okay. we can evolve along the way. Okay. So I think, you know, for us, the choosing of a spiritual name has a number of very important uses and applications. And on one hand, it is the delineation between the mundane and the spiritual. Right. It was also, it is part of anonymity and part of keeping our spiritual lives separate. Right. It is also, though, I, I feel like it was the mantra that I was raised in craft with of there is power in a name. And names have power. Names have meaning. And so the selection of one is incredibly important to align yourself with the types of attributes that you want to have, not only in your spiritual workings, but in your religious life. Well, now, when you're doing that, you also have to keep in mind the negatives that come along with those. Absolutely. So... Again, we have a problem in craft. People don't want to look at always the negatives. Well, so in our in our tradition, when an initiate is what? Well, hold on. Let me, sure. let, me let, 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 let me try this from a different point of view. Okay. How did you pick your first name? Oh boy, we're gonna go there. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, if okay. we're talking about the process of this, let's. All right. So. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, because because when my high priest when my high priestess asked mm-hmm. me that, I, mm-hmm. why did you pick Nide? Because I could spell. Oh God, that's also you being a butthead. <laughs> that's just you know, you just couldn't help yourself. I, I, I know, and I know you got <laughs> slapped with a ruler for it. Um, while Lord Min laughed, uh, it is okay. So for me, I was a somewhat odd situation because my given name is also readily and frequently shortened right so much so that people only call me typically by the nickname or the shortened version and my birth name has a tremendous amount of spiritual uh association and connotation and baggage and baggage, for sure. <laughs> um, and I know what it meant for my parents when they chose the name for me. I had already done a tremendous amount of research on the figures associated with my name. And so I wanted to take my birth name as my first spiritual name at first degree. Now, this was very unorthodox. Yes. <laughs> So I was put through the seven circles of hell. (laughs) It was not the seven circles of hell. It was close. There were at least It was only the first two. Okay, fine. (laughs) And so at Life Temple, we require all initiates to write a name paper when they are uh, petitioning for their first degree and they are selecting their spiritual name. And so my... (laughs) Now, I've seen over the years, I've seen name papers that are a paragraph long. I've seen name papers that are 10 pages long. Mine was a college thesis along with illustrations and annotations. It was ridiculous. (laughs) It had a bibliography, the whole nine. Because I had to prove without a shadow of a doubt that I understood exactly why I was choosing the name, the positives of the name, the spiritual aspects of the name, the negative connotations of the name, the anthropological associations <laughs> with the name, the mythological. Um, I had to even dive into other religions where the name appears. Uh, it was it was incredible. And I think, I think, I don't know, because I wasn't the decision maker or part of them. 
I think one of the reasons you guys did that to me is because everybody wanted to know that I wasn't just being lazy and it wasn't a cop out. Right. Yeah. And that, to a certain extent. Yeah. 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 And, and I wasn't. I mean, I was very serious about wanting to do that. However, what also became apparent was that, yes, my full name was going to be used almost exclusively then moving forward. Mm hmm. In craft settings, whereas the nickname would be used everywhere else. And it was a tremendous amount of research. It was a tremendous, I mean, I had to go so far down the rabbit hole that, I mean, it was beyond meditating. I mean, I was having lucid dreams in relation <laughs> to the name and again, its association. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm named after one of the archangels. So, I mean, that should give you guys some indication right there. It was... <laughs> It was it, pretty well, flipping intense. Again, again, because our, our custom and our tradition is we typically do not like people to take on certain names. Yes. So there's another aspect of it. So, and this is going to bring us into the modern and what's going on right. today. It is somewhat taboo in the traditional churches, traditional craft, to take on the name of a deity or a um a merlin figure yeah a worshipped figure. figure and it's taboo because of how much power again exists with the name and and the responsibility that it comes with <laughs> i mean come on lord merlins are Few and far between. Yes. Real extremely. Lord Morlins yeah. are very few and far between. But now, and here's here's how I've always looked at it too. Um, have you ever met a dog named Thor? Loki Thor. Or a cat named Isis. <laughs> <laughs> they are unholy <laughs> in every sense of the word because they whether we want it to happen or not true they take on those attributes i have never met an animal with a deity name that was not crazy <laughs> absolutely insufferably you know d d not not even behaving like their species potentially no. or very aggressive or very feral or you know right the, on that edge, makes you kind of wonder if there's something special wrong there. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to, I mean, let's be honest, right? You're not going to domesticate a Norse god. No. That's not happening. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, so so with name papers, you know, we're pretty um, strict on, yeah. on what we allow, what we don't, and Again, it's more about does the person requesting the name really, truly, fully understand what it is they're taking? Now, please understand, we are not the only religion that does this. No. Um, this is actually extremely common amongst the Catholics. Priests take a spiritual name. Don't nuns? Don't nuns yes. They, they change nuns, their names after they go through... Whatever so the ritual was. It's the same thing. So at so in, in Catholic faith, at confirmation, which is the last sacrament before marriage, right? It's the last sacrament basically as a child. When you are confirmed, you are stating the name that you will take should you enter the clergy or the nunnery. All right. Okay, or the convent, either one. And that name will then be with you as, again, as your spiritual name. So it's, it's a similar process. The Pope, every time a Pope is named, the Pope changes their name to represent how they intend to Pope. <laughs> I'm not going to say rule because I don't like that, that term, right? He's not, a, he's, he, yes, he's a, he's a leader, but he's not a ruler. But he's popey. He, right, he's popey. <laughs> so, yes, his intention to pope is in his name. Um, I said pope, not poop. So, um, 
You know, there's about three people right now that just like slammed on the brakes. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. It's a great day for a podcast. So modern. And and look, some of us, right? Some mm-hmm. well, and I keep saying modern, but then backtracking. Some of us take multiple names. Yes. With each degree of initiation, yes. many people choose an additional name. So in the traditional church, it's not uncommon to run into Lord or Lady so-and-so who has three individual names. names. Lord, Chase, Knight, Knight Smith. Smith. Right. Now, that wasn't even the order in which you took them. Nope. No. Nope. That's <laughs> one of the tricks, right? We can change it around. We can... And, and some of the basis, right, some of it's numerology based. Some of it is. Some of it is based on uh, spir- yeah, spiritual math, ge- geometry, um, spiritual uh, 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 alphabet work. Um, right. Yeah, there's, there's so many different components that we layer into this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... This is a whole lot harder than you thought it was, well, wasn't it? <laughs> it's not that it's hard. It's that I'm also trying to talk about this without divulging. It's a whole yeah. lot harder than you think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something that is going to verge on a mystery that I'm really not supposed to divulge as a third degree. Um, okay, to non-initiates anyway. So nowadays, we see loads of witches and pagans using a spiritual name a moniker a pseudonym whatever you want to call it many of them are not degreed they're not Mm. initiates that i'm aware of they sometimes self-initiated and they took it upon themselves to take on a spiritual name so that being said i have met probably a dozen minervas (laughs) I know 15 Dianas. Don't get me started on the fox fire. Yeah, the foxes, the silver, the this or that, <laughs> the wolf, this or that, star, moon, mm. crescent. Uh, there, the, There's just so many of these common threads, you know, and so I look at something like Minerva and I go, yeah, okay, look, I get it. Minerva's a badass. I uh, completely understand. And if you have in any way at some point in your life felt marginalized, nothing is going to make you feel more empowered than a connection with Minerva. But to take her name? Uh, those are some big, shoes. giant, spiky Shoes <laughs> <laughs> that are hiding a couple of daggers. All right, D- don't underplay that. <laughs> um, and and then and sometimes I see it happen. I think unknowingly. Where, so for instance, I've met a, a few Minervas who are very standoffish, very difficult to connect with very guarded and i believe this is a direct attribute from the name i think that that is part, when you take on a warrior type um because she was minerva was not you know fun and cuddly this is not aphrodite we're talking about fun and cuddly yeah are any of our goddesses fun and cuddly? there's a few there's a couple that are a little cuddlier than others but you know we're not that's not this no and you know and of course now with with modern everything you know the men are everybody's viking 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 there's like uh, you know I, i'm sorry this is the only reason i hate thor ever came out yeah. the whole viking yeah. shows and stuff no it's just too much of a fad it it well i don't think it's a fad i think it's it's gonna stick around it's a double-edged sword, right? On one hand, it did us a lot of good because it led people to go, okay, so this is a Marvel character, but it's also part of a mythology. So who is this? And and people read, they researched, they... Well, you see, but I see a lot of people that aren't reading or researching. 
for sure. They're just accepting that the Loki from the Marvel movies is the same Loki from the mist from the actual Ooh, myths. That's scary. Do, yeah. do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's where we're, we're having a problem. Mm. Yeah, I can everybody see that. wanting to believe that these Viking shows and period mm-hmm. shows, except why? Yes, are somewhat mm-hmm. correct. They're not completely. Yeah, there's always, 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 especially when it comes to pop culture, yeah. going to be some artistic licensing and and, and some tweaking. That. Yeah, definitely. But it still comes down to how do you want to be perceived? How do you want to be known? You know, these people that have problems with this name, Mm -hmm. is this because they've never been taught how to become these names? I think it's because the name overtook them. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I think the names are, sometimes the name's a little bit too... Almost like a hijacking at that point. The name took on a life of its own. Right. And they didn't, and I think a lot of people didn't realize the expectations of people going around calling you that name and suddenly expect you to act that way. Correct. I mean, and and look, here's the other thing. Again, it's what we had talked about. You know, the negatives. There are no Lord Hitlers running around. No. Obviously, you know, there's no Neros running around. <laughs> there's no, you know, because these names automatically strike so much ick. In modern society that, yeah, no, no one wants that, but. Well, I, I, I don't see anybody picking the name Jeffrey Dahmer. No. Adolf. Again, same thing. Same it, thing. It's not, you know, it's not commonplace, but it's because in that instance, they're so obsessed with the negative. They're so obsessed with the connotation. But then on this other stuff, they only want to look at the good. Right. They only want to look at, you know, Minerva, the wise, you know, who who was represented as the owl. Well, yeah, that's beautiful. But, but, but you're forgetting how in the world she became that wise. Right. There's so much more to it. <laughs> There's also something to be said. Here's here's a great example. We um, know a Lord Peregrine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, having a conversation with a, a priestess elder of mine. We were again. This was part of the name discussion in me taking one of mine, and and she said, "You know, Lord Peregrine just recently said, you know, I don't understand why I just can't seem to take root. I'm always traveling. I'm always <laughs> moving. I'm always, you know, my partner and I really just want to settle down." And have a place to call home. And she looked at him and went, you took the name of a carrier bird. You (laughs) took the name of an animal whose only is to fly constantly and long and great distances. What did you expect was going to happen? So sometimes we balance our names, which is why we don't take just one. No. Sometimes we use other names to balance out other parts yes. of what we've took on. And again, it's that polarity thing that I'm always talking about. I've even seen where priests and priestesses have taken names that balance each other. Yes. Because if you're working that closely together, that can be pretty important. Um, it's still an individual decision. I don't think anybody's being coerced into doing no. that, but it can be effective. It, 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 it is something you need to take into account when you're thinking about this. Who am I going to be working with and how are they going to react? Absolutely. Like, I think in your case too, <laughs> and, and mind you, this is, this is common, right? There's also, how can it be misconstrued or misunderstood or mistaken? Like for you, a lot of people initially when they meet you or introduce to you, they don't know if it's N-I-G-H-T or K-N-I-G. Because those are two very different things. <laughs> night versus night, right? <laughs> that is not the same word. Um, we also get into foreign language, which I'm a big proponent of and linguistics and, and how that plays a role in things. Origin. If we don't know the origins of the word that we're taking and all of its parts and meanings, that's a problem. 
I mean, because you, 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 if you're going to take a name from Greek mythology, you need to understand it from a Greek point of view. Damn right. Um, because this is what you're asking into your life. And then potentially Latin. Don't get me started on the but Latin. It, but it's all, it's all connected. In the U.S., we, because we're such an insular country when it comes to language, we don't really think outside of English and Spanish. No. You go to other parts of the world, especially Europe, right? <laughs> You're constantly surrounded by loads and of different languages. And one word can be very close to another word because they share a common origin. And so, you know, these things are important. They, they do matter in how... <laughs> ritualistically you are going to bond with that name yeah um what do you think the um people should consider as like the qualifications for taking one because i think that's another hard part too people are like oh my god how do i pick a name how do i pick a name yeah well i mean again if you're if you're doing your meditations and you're understanding yourself you're going to pick a name for yourself i, I fair it is an internal thing that you have to do here. It's not like I can give you. Mm. It's not like here. Here's these twelve steps. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. But I. But there's. But there are some parameters. I think. I think you have to look at the pantheon that you're closest to, right? right. The belief system that you're following. What speaks to you, right? Because if you're not. Um, Here's a good one. We're, ta we're talking about Viking names, right? Bjorn. Bjorn is very popular as a Viking name. But its meaning is bear. That's its direct translation. So if you don't really have a connection to a with bear. the animal, maybe that's not the name for you, despite the fact that you might be looking at one of the Viking kings that it was associated with or right. some figure in history. Well, and again, if you're joining a coven or something, picking a name that makes you a loner. Oy, yeah. You know, I mean, you come up to me going, hey, I, I'm going to be called Badger. Yeah. This might not be a good thing. Badgers tend to be isolated creatures. A little aggressive. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's that's something to consider. We do. We want to be the name without a doubt, and I and I understand that in so many ways. I mean, so many of us use the name, or I think so many people pick a name to compensate or to let go of the past, right? And to reinvent themselves. But sometimes we can go a little too far. I, true. Yeah, and you've really got to kind of take a step back and go. Mm, you know, it's like buying a Prius. Or buying, yeah. you know, some big giant monster truck that's going to make people go, oh, he's compensating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they're both going to get you where you want to go. The Prius is a hell of a lot less intimidating, though. The, the, the Prius will do it for $1.50, where, yeah. the, where your Humvee is going to do it for $5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good, good luck with that. Yes, yeah, six miles to the gallon you're getting. <laughs> um, but, but if you equate that to a human being, the Prius is going to have more stamina. Yes. The Hummer is going <laughs> to, no pun intended, run out of gas <laughs> real soon. That's the one kinds shot. Of things. Yeah, exactly. It's one time thing. But the Prius is over here going, I got a battery. I'm good. <laughs> it's, it's important. Um, we think about, you know, the, the, the amount of energy and effort that people put into naming a baby. Um, it's the same thing. You know, you are gifting that child. With a name. Yeah. With attributes of the name, with, with things that you want to see for them. I mean, that name becomes their personality. It becomes that person. Oh, when absolutely. When you're naming a baby, this is literally what we're doing. Absolutely. And there's there's no two ways about it. Um my my husband's name was James, and he didn't there was no Jimmy. No Jim, right? He was James. He didn't shorten it. He hated that. Now, I used to joke. I used to call him King James 
Because let me tell you something, he took on that air. Well, think about it this way. How many Eugenes do you know mm. that is not some nerdy little guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, doing some type of accounting no, or something. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I, yeah. There, there's, you now, are there people that don't always fit the yes, mold? Of yes, of course. But... Of course. Um, but, you know, like I, I have a close friend whose name, I've always known him as Rick. Okay. That's what he goes. He calls himself Rick. The other day we got onto a Zoom meeting and Google automatically put his name in as Richard. And I went, who the hell is Richard? And he just, he goes, yeah. And I said, you are in no way, shape, or form a Richard. He goes, I know. That's why I go by Rick. Now, now we're discussing this. I, I do have a question for you. Something to think about. Mm. All right. What about those people, again, who have certain names? Yeah. Like, what is that? Uh, Richard or whatever. They can be turned into Bob. Yeah. Jim. Dick. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Do you become more of the personality of the nickname or the actual name? Well, and that's what's interesting. So I know for me, the nickname, <laughs> when you get the nickname, you are getting a milder, goofier, more lighthearted version of me. Right. Yeah. When my full name makes an appearance, that's a very different person. Yeah. And that is that is something to well, I mean, consider. Again, again, it is also in the way people refer to you. Absolutely. Uh, there is a difference between me walking up to you and talking to you in your mundane name and mm -hmm. blah, blah. There's a different persona when I'm walking into a ritual going, my lady, you know. Yes. Lady Abba, blah, blah, blah. Yes. There's this different, even when, I, even when we're yelling at each other from across the room. Oh, yeah. Even then, yeah, I've I've seen I've seen the students or the people there at Ritual just suddenly shut up because you're like, "Hey, did you grab that?" <laughs> and everybody kind of go, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're using names." Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, the other thing too is left to their own devices, right? I mean, a a coven would be overrun with Dianas. Oh God, yes. It would be right. That's another I think reason why spiritual names in traditional groups are monitored if you will so that they can delineate because otherwise who the hell are you talking about I, I, I lady mean, diana could be one of seven different people that can get tough and god forbid you actually named the coven that too Oy vey. <laughs> yeah uh, hi we're the dianas <laughs> jesus um calling on all kinds of say i'm going jewish i'm going christian i don't know what's happening Oy vey. Hey, oy vey. <laughs> Um, but, but spiritual names, and for some people it's very nerve wracking, but look don't get at, me wrong. I also think that sometimes people take it too serious. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some people do. And I, and I think that this is, this particular episode is almost a cautionary tale on both sides. If I mean, cause we knew a guy named Rubber Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah, him and we always had an imaginary lady green beans um, <laughs> when I was in classes because the point was that when lady green beans walked into the room and was introduced as lady green beans, that's what she called her. You didn't question it. She was lady green beans. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you wonder if somebody going to name themselves fingers. I mean, it could happen, <laughs> right? Lady fingers. But... I think that if you are already sort of, if you've already taken a name in a non-traditional sense, then really take the extra time to think about it, to dissect it, to go back and do some of this research and ask yourself, is it really befitting of you? Is it really who you want to be spiritually? Because that may change. The other piece is if you're struggling to find a name or to choose one, what are your hobbies? What are your interests? What are, again, what pantheon do you lean towards? Um, What's your favorite color? Yeah. I, that, it's strange how some of these names come about. There's so much inspiration. Um, what's your favorite place in nature? Um, right? Because, I mean... 
sometimes we name after be it the mountains or or the beach, you know, that oh, when, be... and we still have the names like brook, mm-hmm. which it actually river. Is, is is river mm-hmm. and all these these yeah. are these are not names we normally turn around or hear very often. No, and yet they're very powerful names. Um so yeah, grove forest these are all yeah um tree different trees plants um flora fauna now uh, what would you say for someone who wanted to try a name like atlantic or like one of the oceans Mm -hmm. like pacific yeah which i can't say (laughs) that's um i think that Again, first of all, it's understanding that it's a big name. It's a powerful thing body you're talking of about. water. Right. Yes, that is a very imposing entity. And that could be intimidating. But you have to research, again, so much about it. So many, um, again, the understanding of the good, the bad, the ugly in deciding if that's really what you want. What you want in your life. Because it will be there on a daily basis. It does not, it's not just for ritual. No, and emotionally, I think, is where we see the biggest changes in people when they take on a name. I have seen people after initiation who are just so emotionally um, overwhelmed they're crying all the time. They're they're weepy. They're well. Their name is associated with water in some way. Mm. Surprise, surprise. Um, or the opposite, where you can have somebody who becomes very stern, very logical, a little bit too rigid. Earth. Right. Then you have the people who get angry, and their you know their temper starts flaring. You got a little bit too much of that fire. Too there. much fire. So yeah. My favorite by far are the air names and those people become space cadets and they're walking into walls and tripping on their own feet. And we're going, yeah, yeah. okay, let's, all right, let's all just right. get you, you, get you, you thought settled. This, you thought this was a good idea. We yeah. went ahead and yeah. approved it just to. Let's, let's get you grounded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But. <coughs> it is extremely personal and I, and, and. While I think, you know, we're we're being a little hard on the the people who are taking the very common names. Right. Look, if that's really genuinely, wholeheartedly what you identify with, fine, go for it. But just know there is a whole big wide world of names and words to choose from. You know, sometimes I, I will recommend to people Pick something, you know, you love and they will say to me, you know, for instance, okay, owl, the bird, love right. owls. Great. Go look up the word owl in 15 different languages. Find something you like. Yeah. See which one speaks to you or look up the Latin genus of a specific type of owl. And maybe that'll be where it lies. So that that's the bit of creativity you have to you know, introduce. And don't get me wrong, I, going around and like trying to use the name for a little while might actually help too. So. Oh yeah. So, okay. So let's, let's wrap up this way. So you went night. Night. Because you could spell it. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> then I did a uh, Smith. Smith. After because, because I was doing metal work at the time. Blacksmithing. Blacksmithing. Right. And then Chase. Chase. For. Hunting. Hunting. Okay. And I went Gabrielle, no. my given no. name, Alba, which means dawn in Italian and Latin and Spanish, I believe, and Nacht, which is night in German, which right. was a nod to you. Right. Yes. So the, there you the, have it. This is, don't get me wrong. The second two names always seem to be a whole lot easier to pick. After mm-hmm. you pick the first one. They do, because again, by that time, you have figured out what you need to balance. <laughs> yes. By that point, you're kind of going, well, 
I got a little too much of this going on, so you know, let me find maybe something. Maybe that thing wasn't such a great idea anyway. <laughs> counter that just to scooch. Remember, kids, the name of the game is balance. Okay? <laughs> balance, balance, balance in all things. Speaking of which, need more coffee. Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Peg and Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.